some people are going to go, well, if you don't do a job properly, don't do it at all. Well, whatever. <laughs> We bought a 1997 Toyota Coaster and it's green on the outside and it's amazing. But it looks like this and we are converting it. So we've painted and repaired the roof. Yep. Now my attention is going to be focused on the floor. I'll show you what the van looks like on the outside for those of you that haven't seen it. It's a bit noisy because we've got construction workers near us today. So this is the van or the bus. We've just painted the roof and also repaired it as well. Look back on the previous videos for that. But guys, also, I, I, I don't have any tools. This is my tool kit so far, yeah? This is it. And in there is a drill. That's the only power tool that I currently own. So this is for the people who are building it on the side of the road who don't have the land, who don't have the workshops, who need to get it done, get it done right in a basic way. We don't know what we're gonna find underneath. We need to get the floor up. Interesting fact, the Toyota Coaster floor is predominantly wood. So not as you get in other vans that I've lived in and converted like where it's been a full metal bottom floor. This floor is actually wood at the front. I think there's a bit of metal here in between the wheel arches and then wood at the back, which I think is brilliant because one, it's easy to replace if it's rotten, and cheaper, and saves time, and yeah, happy with that. Let's just crack on and do it. Uh, I'm gonna start at the back. What should we start at the front? No, we'll start at the back. Start at the back, let's go. We'll keep the screws in the uh, dog bowl. Right, we've got, some bolts with washers on so it's gonna be the first thing you might be able to see down here but on this first panel we're taking off there's definitely some water damage because look how look how rotten this is so this is this piece of wood is completely gone up until about here first panel of the bus is about to come off. Well, one drill bit later, we've got the uh, the fuel sender, I believe this is, because the fuel tank is under here. So this plate, two screws, as you can see, they're completely rounded. So I'm gonna have to get them out. Um, clean this up, I'll actually get the vacuum cleaner on that because there are some electrical plugs there. And yeah, should be able to start carrying on. By the way, what I want in these videos is if people have got like better ways of doing things or they think I'm doing something that might be like better done a different way, please let me know. Because like I said, I have done vans before, but they've only been basic conversions, but they've been good basic conversions. Um, this is a lot more in depth. And yeah, we really are starting from the bottom, aren't we? And I've got, like I said before, zero tools, so Every time I need to do something, I have to sum up whether or not I need to buy the tool to do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, whilst I'm taking the um, taking the sections off, I'm labelling them. So the one at the back is number one, 
and I've put north-south on it with north being the front end of the bus, south being the back so we know which way it's orientated. Obviously that's pretty straightforward anyway but I've spray painted that on it. What we're gonna have to do when we take all, look at this by the way, $30 this for an orange juice, sausage and egg, it's, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, um, there's loads of glue down there. We're gonna have to take the glue off, but we can do that afterwards. is I think there's a plug here maybe this was is for like an electronic door operation like motor or something like that I'm not sure but this is Japanese writing on it it says preheating timer it's not actually connected to anything so I don't know. we'll just see if we can get this off no idea what it says anyone knows what that is let me know but it's not actually connected to anything looks like it was mounted there because the holes marry up but there's no there's just that plug in Strange. so anyway, it makes it a bit easier to take off because what i can do is now can now get this rubber gland and take it off like that right we've got the entire floor up now um, you can see that it's the glue that's going to be the pain in the ass getting off. Like all this, well, you can't really see it, but all that stuff there. You can see they put some spacers to raise the ply. It was 12 mil ply, I think, um, on here. Um, that's what we'll probably replace it with. If not, just a little bit more, maybe 16, because I did see that, although it's good enough for Toyota to do it in 12 mil, it wasn't really designed to be a camper van with 12 mil so maybe we'll do a little bit more 16 however far the budget will stretch anyway yeah a positive like i said i'm going to get to work cleaning this now um and getting all the glue off looking at the rust we'll start treating it we'll give it a top coat with some rust proof paint then we'll buy the new ply i've kept the old outline it slap it on and away we go
one thing that I noticed when I was ripping up the floor, um, the glue has been extremely hard to get off. I haven't even got it all off in some areas. Some people are gonna go, well, if you don't do a job properly, don't do it at all, well, whatever. Um, but there's lots of these. So where the screws were going through the ply, exist old plywood into the um, frame. So there's a lot of that stuff going on. Um, and you can also see that inside these rails here, uh, I haven't painted, but it was full of mud. So I've taken all the mud out, uh, vacked it out, and there's some, you know, there's some holes in there now. So stuff does get in there. Hopefully it can sort of fall out. Um, I've taken out some piping from here because you can see there's some coolant pipes here, not attached to anything. And then there was a big one going underneath or something like that. <coughs> I think that's an old like floor heater or something. It's a, definitely a heater, I think, because they look like coolant pipes. And yeah, what, the heat wasn't here, so I've just ripped it out. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave them in because they're quite, you know, they're, oh, can I leave? Can I, should I take them out when they go into there? And I don't know how far, but I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna leave them in. At least I know there's some spare coolant pipes if I ever need them. Um, battery area over there the step so the step is rotten i uh, will do that in another video that's going to get pulled out and put back you know, a new fresh one put back in now the ply that we're going to go and put down i'm just going to go and have a look at a few more people who have done the conversion see what ply they used now i think the factory ply that we took off was 12 mil like on this area and I think that for some reason at the back, it's a bit thinner. Now, I'm gonna go for marine ply, and then we'll go for a waterproof coat underneath. Now we've got the existing or the old ply that we can cut around. We just need to go and buy a jigsaw, because we've got no tools, and buy some ply sheets. Now the ply sheets, I swear they were bigger in the UK from the DIY stores, because if I can remember rightly, this is about 1.9 wide, 1.9 meters wide and it's about four and a half meters best about four and a half meters in length now the ply sheets in terms of width it's like 1200 and these are this is 1.9 so it just means that we're gonna have to get more ply sheets you could ply it in less you could ply it like probably with less sheets but if you get the existing ply that's there and cut around it you know that fits and it's just probably going to be quicker even though it's going to take more sheets anyway yeah we need to get the ply we need to get the jigsaw uh but first we've got to let this dry so we'll see you we'll see you when we've got the ply